Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And I'm prefacing this video by saying, not that you would, don't feel bad for me at all. But I have made some very bad decisions and I do have to sell my dream car, which I never thought that I would ever sell. And that's my Mercedes SLS AMG. So everything sort of hit me all at once here when it comes to Hoobie's Garage 3.0 construction, uh, renovations on the house, along with taxes, and it looks Looks like I've made sort of a bad investment, we'll see on that one, to where I am cash poor but still car rich and I could go one of two ways. I could get another car loan and put myself even deeper into debt or I could sell one off but it's really hard because my current collection is basically a greatest hits album of all the cars that I love. So the BMW Z8, beautiful retro styled analog six speed manual, my gated manual Ferrari 599 conversion, love that car. The S SLR and the SLS are two cars that I love. This one with its gullwing doors, just such an iconic, amazing machine. But the SLR behind it uh, scratches the same itch. And that's what I've come to the conclusion of. The SLS and the SLR, they do the same things. And the SLR is the one that I favor now. It feels more special to drive. It's a lot more fun and special and rare of a car. So I tend to take it out more and enjoy it. The SLS is much more usable much more of a cross country road trip card, feel comfortable doing that, uh, but I don't use it for that. So it really has sat a lot in the last year since I've gotten the SLR. I took the SLR to Monterey Car Week instead of the SLS. So I can't believe it, but it just sort of makes sense to sell. And also because it has appreciated a lot in the four years that I've owned it. So I actually feel kind of smart, even though if I had put that money in the stock market when I bought this thing at the lows of 2020, I'd have a lot more money in the bank. But I do have a lot of great memories with this car, including it being a car trek car. So this is very bittersweet. So we'll go over that in today's video, my long-term impressions of owning an SLS AMG, and we'll check on what this thing is paying for all the progress around the farm. So well, let's hit the road and say goodbye to the SLS. But before we continue on this train wreck of an update, I'd like to thank Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. If you have anyone relying on your income, you need life insurance. It's just that simple, and Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find and buy insurance you need at the right price. If something happens to me as a father of two kids, I know I can't just leave them a pile of hoopties and debt. So that's why I got a life insurance policy many years ago, and I sure wish I had known about Policy Genius back then, because it makes what is usually a challenging process so simple. Policy Genius's technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers. Instead of calling around and going from site to site, taking a bunch of time, it's just a few clicks to give you tons of options. Now, I know some of you probably have a life insurance policy through work, but it may not be enough to take care of your family when you're gone, so it's certainly worth checking out. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million in coverage. On some of these policies, you can be approved in the same day and not have any medical exams. With Policy Genius, their licensed, award-winning agents are here to help you find the best policy for you. They work for you, not the insurance companies, and don't have any incentive to recommend one policy company over the other. So it's no wonder Policy Genius has thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. So save time and money and provide your family with a financial safety net using Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash shoobies or click the link in the description below to get your free live insurance quotes and see how much you can save. Save. Growing up, and still is, the ultimate dream car for me, the Mercedes 300 SL Goldwing. And when I was a kid, they would sell for $250,000, $300,000, and I thought, one day, if I worked really hard, I'd be able to buy one of those. Well, that's not happening. Nowadays, a Goldwing is a multi-million dollar prospect, worth more, more than everything that I own, and uh, I'll, I'll never be able to justify buying one. This, when it came out, right around when I was graduating college, it seemed like the next best or the better thing. I was in love with these things the moment I saw them. The first car designed by AMG, engineered from the ground up, and it had this amazing 6.2 liter V8. 563 horsepower, dual clutch transmission, and the styling drop dead gorgeous, not to mention the doors. So when I found this one four years ago, it was just perfect. Designio Mystic White on the exterior, beautiful color, the Designio Natural interior, 30,000 miles on it, so just enough to where I could drive it, but not too high to where it would detract from the resale, and just 
love this car. I've taken this thing many places, but the highlight has to be the car trek experience with the SLS AMG. Got to track this thing on the track along with the first car I bought with my own money, a Mercedes 300 TD, an old diesel, which is what started my Mercedes experience outside of my grandmother's car that she gave me when I was 16. I wanted to buy the diesel to keep the SL nice and learn how to work on cars and learn how to wheel and deal from that car basically and Mercedes diesels. But this thing was a rocket ship on the track. It was a blast to drive for the thousand or so miles of the Trek itself. And it is just the perfect sports car, I feel like. It's just so elegant and beautiful. Something you do wanna hop in and drive just on a daily basis, but also something you go track, you can turn all the knobs up and have a very potent track weapon. This platform continued on with the AMG GT, but that car just isn't as special. Not only does it not have the doors, but it has a different engine that doesn't sound quite as good. Still really good, but it just doesn't feel as special as the SLS. Now, like I said, this doesn't feel as special as the SLR McLaren, which is why I favor that car over the SLS, but in an ideal world, I would still keep both. And this is an ideal world where I could take this car and get a loan against it and pay all of my bills, but I've already done that with the Countach and the conversion van. And uh, yeah, things are just piling up. So I'm trying to be disciplined right now, but it is very, very hard. Once again, not that you are, don't feel bad for me, but the last year with all my personal issues, it has been a major, major hit to my finances. And buying this farm and making my dream garage is a very expensive thing to do as well. So it is for good reasons, overall positive in the long run. And this gives me the ability to be able to pounce on the next Countach of a lifetime deal or something else if it pops up. I need to do the right thing. We can do this. Well, as you can see, this isn't me selling an SLS AMG. Uh, two things happened. One, uh, because of winter and market changes, they couldn't offer me as much money as they could uh, during the summer. Uh, not that big of a difference, but still enough to give me a moment to think. And that moment to think was enough for me to just turn around and drive this thing back home because I love this car. I really need to sell it or do something to get some money to come in, uh, but I don't need it quite just yet, so I'll have a slight stay of execution here and think of something to do. I tried an OnlyFans once and that didn't go so well, so I guess we'll see what happens, but uh, next let's go back to the farm to see where all my money is going. Well, I waited as long as I could to give an update on Hoobie's Garage 3.0, several days because they assured me they were going to start this week and they have it. Uh, progress continues on the house edition, the great room. You can see it really starting to come together over here. Electricians coming in very soon. Uh, but when it comes to Hoovy's Garage 3.0, not much has happened. They did deliver the equipment to start putting it together, uh, but so far nobody has showed up to get started on actually doing the job. And I'm not sure why. It's been warm enough these last several days to actually start up. We've had a lot of weather lately, unfortunately, which would have slowed them down. But still, this is about the third time where I've been told they're gonna be out here and they don't show up, which is very typical in construction, unfortunately. So the good news in all of this is it does slow things down to where uh, paying the bills makes things a little bit easier with me not selling the SLS. Uh, but since I've already paid for the bulk of it, the concrete and the building, the construction, there's all the geese. It is beautiful out here. We'll go inside here and finish things off because the geese are being a little bit loud in my only garage. So it didn't cost very much for the erection, for the building parts, the cheapest part of the building, and obviously the most important part because I don't have a place to put my cars other than the hangar. Uh, so yeah, Felix, what do you think of all this? So obviously I was hoping to show you some of the building going up in this video. That didn't happen, but uh, there's also some progress at the car wizards, and apparently he's found something very, very weird with the 46 Chrysler, something he's a little bit scared of. What do you think of that, Neelix? So we'll head to the car wizards. Wizard! Well, old faithful there. Honda Accord. These switch won't die, will they? No, you just come in like you own the place, huh? Oh, sorry, you came in like the Kool-Aid man? <laughs> yeah. So sorry. Well, you told me that there was some interesting stuff that you found on the 46 Chrysler, among other things. So I definitely wanted you to figure out the heater because the heater hoses were disconnected uh, to the firewall. And you told me 
that's the strangest heater you've ever seen. So yeah, it's quite a hot topic, actually. Okay. So we're looking for heater hoses, like you said. We can see where on this vehicle where heater hoses would go in, like right here. There's a little something, a cap. Oh, I see. Yep. And there's one way back there by that back spark plug. Okay. This car never came with a heater core, even when it was new. It must have been in Florida or somewhere where there's no heater needed. Or Heat would have been an option in 1946. That's hard to believe. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Someone had this installed later on, and it's not even a heater that uses coolant. Right. So it was that Motorola. So I see the button that was on the dash, the weird Motorola like automatic climate control right here where it was off and 50, 60, 70, 80. So that was that was this thing, huh? Yeah, so these look like heater core hookups. Right? They're not. They're air intake or exhaust or something. This actually is powered by gasoline. Wait. So it takes the fuel from the gas tank? Like it has its own fuel line? Yeah, there's a fuel pump here. What? And the fuel would come in through here. There's some more of the fuel line. And you would select a temperature and it would light and... So there is a spark and an open flame going on with this heater system from... Yes. Know, really? A Motorola gas-fired heater. I'm sure it works very well when it works, but that sounds terrifying. It sounds dangerous. We did put power to it and the fan comes on, but... Do you really want to trust a 40, 50, however, 60, 80, 80 year old gas fire <laughs> heater? Yeah, that's really cool though. So I see you have everything off along with some other old stuff here. So that, like my water pump you showed earlier being all shaky. And this, what's this? That was the actual side cover gaskets, the valve cover. These oh are yeah. New old stock from 1947. Wow. You can see on the front, this, I think it's like 947 is the date. Mopar. Parts and accessories. That's what I think on the part. That is that so cool. That's so that's something old. Yep. Is there something new, a heater solution? Yes, right here. Well, okay. This looks the part. It looks kind of art deco. It would fit inside of here and not right. look out of place. Underneath the dash, yes. As you can see, this uses heater core, actual coolant pipes here. A traditional, like a modern heater. Okay. And we would plumb these into the plugged ports I just showed you. Okay. And so you'd have heat again. The only thing is, this is a, still a 6-volt system. So is right. this a 12-volt fan? Yeah, so I'm going to pull this fan out and actually put some 6-volt fans. They're square-shaped, like, computer fans. Okay. I can put one, a big one right here. It'll do the same job and run off of 6 volts, not 12. All right. And can you do, like, a resistor or some kind of knob where I have any speed? Or is it yes. just going to be on or off? I can do a resistor. Elegant and subtle. I guess underneath the... Dash. Yeah, so there's the holes for the heater core right there. So it's perfect. It's for the passenger. So April will be comfortable. I yeah. think the compartment's not giant in here. I actually think it would heat the whole compartment fine. Yeah, well, that'll work. I mean, it's the exact same as what they had in 46 without gasoline going in between your legs and lighting a flame. Yeah. <laughs> That's... Not only do you worry about getting burned alive, but then there's carbon monoxide issue that's, as well. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, I guess we can go from the 40s to the modern era because I'm having climate control issues with the CL65. I left it with you and we did a mechanical inspection, like found the collapsed mounts and some things. But you needed to dive into the blower motor and stuff, why it wasn't kicking on on this V12 600 horsepower beast. So that's probably a lot more electronic, right? Yeah. We found, actually Grimes checked it over, the, the actual blower motor itself is dying. That's why it was doing that. Okay. We were doing some checks, you know, it had that collision error, like messages on the dash. Yes. Uh, well, the battery's 10 years old. It was, it was giving errors. We put a new battery in, we found out there's a sensor. It's actually back here underneath the bumper. There's four sensors. Really? There's one right around in here that's bad. Okay. And it throws the whole system out of whack. See, and I figured because it had been in a front-end collision, it wasn't working because of that, and it wasn't fixed properly. So it was fixed properly. It's just the back that's never been hit. Right. Okay. All right. While he was in there, we found the motor mounts and transmission mount are, like, fully collapsed. Yes. It's overdue on some services on the oil, and the brake pads and rotors at some point are going to need to be done, and they're so expensive. So you have an estimate for me? Yes. Let's go take a look at it. Okay. Well, and this one's still waiting for a radiator to get fixed, but the Callaway, it's on the ground, huh? 
It's actually done. Oh, so all the LT1 stuff, the OptiSpark thing's in the water pump? Yep. We just need some nice roads, huh? To exactly. get it out of here? That's right. Okay. So there is a bill, probably. Yes, and you're not going to run from this one. It's actually not too bad. This in here? Yep. Your brakes are going to be over three grand. They're $700 per rotor. Yeah, I could have knew that with AMG brakes, but mm -hmm. they're at four millimeters. I mean, I can wait probably six months or so, especially yeah. if I'm not daily driving it or whatever. Okay. Yeah, brake fluid service, trans service, overdue. Blower motor's 500 bucks. And then the engine mount's $1,100? And the transmission mount together. Okay. Serpentine belts. Yeah. <sighs> Okie doke. Well, so everything probably but the brakes for now, but... Right. Shoot. And I need to get some different wheels for it, but I'm looking at you know, five or six grand here? If we were to do everything easily, yeah. Uh, right. Probably five anyway. Okay. And the Camarillo bill's not this big, right? No. Because <laughs> this video started out with me needing to sell my SLS AMG, and then I couldn't bring myself to do it because the bills are piling up. Not wizard bills, but right. home bills and new garage bills and taxes and everything else. But, uh, yeah, I guess I need to remember my wizard tax as well. Yeah. All right. All right, you ready to get throw it on you? Okay. There you go. That's a lot for a Camaro. But still, again, compared to the seven, eight thousand dollar ones you've been giving me lately, this is a little better. But that was a lot of work. It was actually. Yeah, OptiSpark distributor, the new one, two hundred seventy-eight dollars. I mean, everything still reasonable parts-wise on this car. Yeah, for everything you did, not bad. No, not bad. Okay, well, I'll pay up, but I don't want to drive it on this crap out here. So if you don't mind storing it for a bit, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, that's it. fine. No problem. Thanks, Wizzy.